This is how great teams work. Great work teams don't work this well. If you're a team leader, how safe do you think the members of your team feel in your meetings? Do they feel confidence in being able to speak truth to power, i.e. you? How safe do you think they feel expressing feedback or even critical carrying feedback to their peers in a forum inside of that team? whether it's inside of a team meeting or even outside of a team meeting. How much does your team really have each other's back? These are fundamental questions that any high performing team should be asking itself. At Frozzy Greenlight, we have come up with a word. We've created a new word that is so crucial to the performance of a high performing team. Why did we come up with a new word? Because we didn't feel as we saw and interviewed and our research investigated high performing and low performing teams, we didn't actually feel that there was a word for effective high team performance that really captured the essence of what we were looking for in a high performing team. We've come up with a word, which is, do you have a co-elevating team? A co-elevating team is a team really committed to the mission. They're clear on the mission and equally they're committed to each other in achieving it. A team committed to the mission and each other. You can easily see as you begin to ask yourself if your team qualifies at that level where many teams break down. A team like that would be able to speak the truth in a meeting openly because everybody knows they have aligned mission and they all have deep respect and care for each other. The group knows that <clears throat> the accountability isn't just to you as a leader but the accountability is to their peer group. And outside of the meeting, they're coaching each other and working with each other to assure that each other succeeds. They're not just happy for each other's success, they're assuring each other's success and that they're spending time outside of meetings owning the success of each other. How much time are you spending in your meetings collaborating on each other's issues and problems? Are people bringing problems to the table looking and excited about their fellow team members giving input. All of these are earmarks of a co-elevating team. If you want to get started, I'll give you just a, a couple of, of simple practices. Recently, by the way, um, we have been executing coaching of co-elevating teams in many, many Fortune 100 organizations. It was at the core of the turnaround of one of the most powerful and important automotive companies in the world. Uh, it has been at the core of our work with some of the largest retailers in the world. It has been at the core of the, the turnaround and the movement of a very traditional contractor in the aerospace space into being a leading edge technology company in the defense category. When these teams buckled down and got committed to the mission and each other, it fundamentally changed the trajectory of their performance. To start out, you've got to have some psychological safety. We throw this word around a lot these days, but the practice of building psychological safety is the practice of building respect, practice of building trust, and one more step, the practice of building empathy and give a damn. If you think about that, if the relationship is, is critical, for people to be safe and comfortable and fluid in their dialogue with each other. How do you build that relationship? The way you build that relationship is through building empathy. One of the tools that we use is the night before we go and coach uh, an executive team, we all go out to dinner as an executive team. And we don't just have small talk. The next time you're taking your team to dinner, my recommendation is you don't just have a dinner with small talk, you have a dinner with intention. There's a wonderful practice that we have been using called a personal professional check-in. Personal professional check-in allows you to go around the room and just ask your teammates, what's going on in your life right now that's most important or most salient, personally and professionally? On a personal basis, you could do it as quickly as 30 to, uh, seconds to a minute. I might comment on what's going on with my kids. I might comment on some of the exciting things that I have uh, or the frustrating things I have with core projects or some of the work-life balance issues that we all struggle with. All of these issues come up when you do a personal professional check-in, but what it does is it's creating a level of us in the room that is a good foundation 
particularly the more vulnerable and willing people are to share with each other, it's a good foundation for the pressured conversations we're gonna to have to have on the following day where we're pushing each other to show up with candor and accountability and critical thinking and collaborative dialogue and push back on each other's ideas. To that end, on the, on the following day, one of the things that we'd like to do is uh, I, I created this thing I call Yoda in the room. Yoda is that all wise little green character with the fuzzy ears, right? And, and the, the critical thing about Yoda is Yoda speaks the truth, Yoda is always right and Yoda is wise. I believe that every team have the, has the wisdom of Yoda inside of it if you were to unleash it. The problem is most of us don't have the psychological safety, the permission or the contract with our teammates to have that level of safety. So I introduced Yoda where I say to a team today, uh, Dave, you, Jane, you, and uh, Julie, you, the three of you are the Yodas in the room. Every hour in our team meeting or every half of an hour of our team meeting, I'm gonna ask you a question which is, as Yoda, what are your instincts telling you right now? What are the thoughts that you have that you think we're not saying but we should? What is being left unsaid that maybe out of fear or, or concern or fatigue isn't being addressed? Have courage for the room as the Yoda and pull that out of the room. And now we've got to the stage where people will gain the courage by raising their hand and say, wait a second, Yoda moment. Yoda moment is, hey, listen, there's something that isn't being said. Hey, wait a second, this conversation is taking a turn south. Hey, wait a second. But it's the kind of permission that every team member needs to be courageous in a room. In a sense, you could say, by hiding behind the use of the tool Yoda, but it's really just the safe word that we've all agreed that as a contract, we will be better performing if we're clear, candid, honest, transparent, courageous in our rooms together. I've given you two simple practices. One is a long, slow dinner with personal professional check-in and deep talk, not small talk. And the second is the unleashing of a tool like Yoda in the room, uh, which allows you to focus on a higher degree of candor and courage that, that plays off of the, uh, the day before. All of this, is in service of co-elevation. You've got to build a co-elevating team today. Your team as individual performers is not going to cut it. It's not going to get you there. There's a new pressure in the world today around work and you need a new set of work rules, a new set of team dynamics. The highest performing teams rarely exist in organizations today. By the way, this isn't that different than high performing sports teams committed to the mission of getting to the Super Bowl, committed to each other and their personal and professional success, giving each other feedback at halftime in the middle of the game. This is how great teams work. Great work teams don't work this well, but you need to make that your level of performance excellence, a co-elevating team.